So uh, Randy, just a quick definitional thing. We had a number of questions as we were going along about your comment about two-way, excuse me, two-way smart meters. And I just wanted you to take a moment, to, uh, please, to define what you meant by this. Well, with the uh, metering, there's a people refer to the smart meters, and the smart meters themselves now all pretty well adhere to the ANSI standards, uh, and we don't see any real issues there. Where we're actually seeing it to be much more of an issue is related to the communications technology associated with it. So a lot of the, there are people, uh, Silver Spring, that are moving to an IP-based approach. There is a Current that's doing BPL. There's ITRON with their open way. And a lot of them are using mesh technologies. Those mesh technologies have efficiencies, but they also have trade-offs in your ability to, say, pick up last gas from all devices. You can't do that. That doesn't necessarily hurt in terms of uh, the ability to detect an outage, but you need to be very careful when you're, say, using that for uh, outage rested, uh, restoration verification where you may have nested outages. So one of the, every, you know, we are finding that it's, it really is, you've got to take a hard look at those things. Also just meter standards. Uh, in Colorado, one of the things that has been a significant impact to us is regulatory requirements that we have net meters with separate labeling and regular residential meters. Well, that's crazy. Both can do the same thing now, uh, but we need to get the regulatory standards up to date so that we can use a single common meter and then allow it to operate either way it needs to. Uh, thanks very much. Well, we've got a number of comments uh, as we've been talking along saying thank you to the presenters and great uh, data, great information, and I wanted to second that. We also had a question, uh, uh, several questions are around, you know, uh, from the data management side, what was the biggest challenge or the most unexpected issue that cropped up? Because, Randy, you've been on uh, the other side where many of our listeners are, which is just getting started, now that you're at least partway on the other side of the mountain, uh, you know, what was your kind of biggest surprise, your biggest lesson learned on the data side? I guess on the data side, there were twofold. Uh, one is that uh, there are, we have what I consider a, a world-class architecture. It's, it's extremely good. Okay? But at the same time, it's fundamentally different than what we you, we did before because it allows for these avalanches of data. And it also, as we've worked with the various partners and talked to people, there's still a lot of questions and you know different ways and approaches. So I think it's been uh, interesting just how passionate uh, some companies or some experts are for one approach or another. And uh, so we're working hard to, to get facts to, to back that up. Our systems so far are performing magnificently, so we're very happy where we're at. But part of it is to look at where do we really go. The second piece is on the data side is that it's not just, you know, we, we thought that it would be a lot of the grid data would cause us challenges. In fact, uh, as a utility, we don't have a group. We didn't even have a residential CRM system. We had a CIS system. And we've had to implement a CIS system to maintain that data and link it back in. And the amount of interest that's been generated in obtaining all of this customer information uh, is, is uh, amazing. So I guess I would say the, how much, just not grid, but how much other data needed to support home devices and what you learn, that data, the uh, issues on the architecture, and just uh, some of the regulatory things that we're having to go through or get answered on as to who we can share data with or not. And this final question about have new business processes been formalized uh, in terms of new outage process using meter data to an OMS, and has this been deployed to the business? Uh, great question. And the answer is yes. Uh, we have used uh, complex event processing technology to uh, front end the, uh, the data streams that are coming in from the meters, because what we found is our traditional outage management system couldn't handle the data avalanche. Now that's actually causing us to question in the future, do we stay with a dedicated OMS system or do we use a complex event processing system to manage that portion of the uh, functionality and then use the analysis and uh, 
reporting capabilities of our OMS. We've also been using the data to uh, do outage verification so that for nested outages, so when an outage takes place, now our dispatch center actually double checks uh, to make sure that there's nobody left off before they close a ticket because they can see everybody now in that area. That's been a big change and it's had a significant impact. And the third thing that's happening is that because we have much better grid state information and because we have better uh, information on uh, power flows, we're actually incorporating into our switching, even unplanned switching, uh, the ability to go out and look. So for example, if we, as we have more and more uh, people that are attached to the grid to provide power into it, uh, you want to do things like you don't want to ground out a generator uh, that's in somebody's home. So we're actually now uh, incorporating use of our power flow, our meter data in terms of reverse meter flows and so forth uh, as part of our switching operations for restoration. So it's been a pretty fundamental change and we put all of that information real time into the hands of our trouble men in the trucks. Thank you so much to Jeffrey Taft, to Peter Belknap, uh, to Randy Houston, and again, thank you to Accenture. We'll see you all next time. <laughs>